What is up ladies and gents, this is George Bean, and in this video, I thought it would be worthy to discuss the new, uh, the upcoming new Halloween film, which is set to be released in, in October of this year, with John Carpenter returning as a creative consultant on it. Uh, just to mention first, if you'd have seen my, on my video playlist, my very first, first video was a commentary on the 1978 original Halloween film. Aside from it being my very first, and also very heavily flawed, video aside, I mentioned in it just how much of a huge fan I am of Halloween. I mean, I immensely love John Carpenter's Halloween. It is most definitely one of my all-time favorite, uh, uh, one of my all-time fa favorite horror films ever. I'd rank it up the, in the number one spot on my list of favorite horror films tied alongside with Scream. Halloween and Scream are quite possibly the two primary contributing factors uh, to my being a, a huge horror movie fan. I'll enjoy any and all horror movie I watch, whether it's slasher films, psychological thrillers, etc. These two movies are the reason I love horror films. I mean, hell, on my favorite horror, favorite horror films list, with Halloween and Scream tied in the number one spot, other movies on my list uh, has to be, quite possibly has to be, uh, Black Christmas, Friday the 13th, Psycho, and even The Haunting and either The Haunting and or The Shining. I even own books uh, about writing horror film films for me as an as aspiring writer as well. Now I understand that most people tend kind of tend to look down on uh, at the horror genre as being like the bo bottom of the barrel, but it is, uh, but it also kind of, but it is also kind of hypocritical if you ask me. Hollywood had always made horror films for decades, the genre having been influential, influenced uh, in part by the Italian Cialo subgenre composed of such classics as A Bay of Blood, Torso, Deep Red, and Suspiria, the latter two of which were made by famed Cialo director Dario Argento. So, as I said in my Screen 2 review, the horror genre will never die, and it is a genre I will always defend with my life. Uh, because I compare horror films to roller coaster thrill rides. People sometimes tend to like putting their life on the edge to gain a, a sense of thrill as a form of escapism from life. Huh? Sometimes you just want to have the thrill. And to give an example of just how influential Halloween truly is to me as an aspiring writer, I have even written an 11 page outline or a small script. Uh, uh, an outline or small script entitled Here Comes the Boogeyman, which was written by me as my sort of love letter to Halloween, with even some minor references to, to both Black Christmas and Scream. This is the outline, and if you would like, a chance to see me discuss more about my Here Comes the Boogeyman script, uh, let me know in the comments below. And also, I had even printed and framed uh, a picture of the Haddonfield Town map, uh, a map of the Haddonfield Town. That is just how obsessive I am of, the, of this movie, Halloween. Now to say, as a side note, uh, I now happen to ho to own uh, all of the Halloween movies, films, on DVD in some capacity, just for the sake uh, of, uh, just for the sake uh, of having them in my collection, and, uh, but it, 
has sort of become like an, an unintentional tradition to watch the original Halloween a lot, even if, even if it's not on Halloween night. I mean, at some point, I would tend to watch this movie on an endless loop almost every night. I did that many times before. That is just how much I really love this movie. The only Halloween films I had seen in cinemas uh, were the were the Rob Zombie films. Uh, and to say, when I first saw Zombies 2007 reimagining, I thought it w was a decent reinvention of the original, and I liked that it showed Michael's backstory, showing how he became a killer because of family issues. But I did not like the white trash family element. But that's the zombie's trademark in most of his movies. But keep in mind, I was like 14 years old when I first saw this film in cinema. So that was when I was still a naive kid who hadn't yet, hadn't yet had any knowledge on how the filmmaking process works. That didn't... That did not flood into me until I was 15, which was when, uh, after watching both The Dark Knight and James Cameron's Titanic, I had made a big life decision in my life that I had wanted to become a filmmaker, or at the very least, a writer, as proven uh, by my Here Comes the Boogeyman uh, outline. And I had written multiple scripts, many ideas still forming in this head. So I really want to be a writer, screenwriter at the least. And of course, two years later, in 2009, I had gone to see Zombie Sequel Halloween 2 in cinema, or H2 as many people refer to it as. And I had felt a bit dulled out by it. Specifically because of how the characters in it were very unlikable and shitty and yelling at each other through most of the movie. Laurie Strode the most, especially when they kept saying fuck us about five, to seven, five or seven times in one sentence. You know, one fuck or two is enough for your horror film. Hell, in the original film, the F word is, was not up what... The, uttered even once, and that this movie has an R rating on it, but no uh, no uh, F word in it, uh, proving that you don't, that you do not need a few F words to give your horror film an R rating. But if there is one big positive thing I will say about zom Zombies films, it's that Brad Dorf as Sheriff Brackett and Daniel Harris as Annie Brackett were the two very best things in these movies. Uh, I honestly would love to have seen a remake or spin-off focusing on these two uh, characters. Uh, I was saddened when Daniel Harris's Annie died in H2, uh, and seeing Dorf's Brackett breaking down in tears over her death. Uh, <sighs> That's the saddest part. And as for my opinion on the zombie Halloween films, it changes every now and then. Sometimes I like them, other times I merely dislike them. But that, it, but that is as far as I can say about my opinion on them. Because if you love or hate the zombie films, that is your opinion. I am not here to change your opinion. I am just here to give my own little insight into these films and hopefully interest you all into wanting to see them or not. As a man had once said, let's be friends. I know we can do great things together. But it now has been nine years since a Halloween film was made. Uh, the last one having been 2009's H2 by Rob Zombie a sequel to his own 2007 remake of the 1978 film. After Zombies H2, <clears throat> the Halloween's former rights holder, uh, Dimension Films, who were the o former owners of the Halloween series since the early 1990s, starting with Part 6, The Curse of Michael Myers, had attempted and failed to get another Halloween film off the ground. 
going through a variety of scripts that had been considered and rejected. Their first attempt began in 2011 with a possible Halloween 3D, ugh, 3D, with Patrick Lucier and Todd Farmer of My Bloody Valentine 3D and Drive Angry Thing. But Dimension pulled the plug on that project, arguing that they did not have the time or money to get it made, which is a, a stupid excuse if you ask me. And fun fact, Patrick Lucier was the editor, editor on Scream, uh, specifically the first three movies, uh, before he moved on to directing. Then Dimension attempted again, this time in 2015, with a new script by Patrick Melton and Marcus Dunstan of Saw 4 through 7 fame, the writers of Saw's 4, 5, 6, and 7. The script, tentatively titled Halloween Returns, was reported to be not a remake nor a reboot, but a recalibration of the franchise, reintroducing audiences to Michael Myers years after his initial rampage from the first two original films. It was said that it would focus on Myers being confronted by a new generation of Haddonfield victims while on death row. If you ask me, the word recalibration sounds like euphemism for reboot out of not wanting to further piss the fans off. But it also feels more like an alternate sequel to the 78 film, much like, how, much like the 2013 film Texas Chainsaw 3D which had also acted as an alternate sequel to the 1974 original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, despite some inconsistencies and continuity er errors, such as the lead heroine's age and the time setting. Is, is it the 1990s or the 2010s in that movie? But then it seemed like things were going very well, but then delays ensued. Huh? in mid-2015, supposedly to rewrite the script, according to executive producer Malik Akid, who is the son of uh, Mustafa Akid, the financier of the original Halloween. I wouldn't be surprised if the Weinsteins had tried to fuck it all up, as they always do. But then, in December 2015, it was uh, announced that Dimension Films had passed the deadline to make a Halloween film and thus had lost the film rights to the Halloween series, which meant that Halloween Returns was no longer to be made a reality. There was a time when Dimension was approached by directors wanting to take on Halloween, but at, the, but at that time, Dimension had all the time in the world and were busy dragging their feet. And consequently, they had lost that time, and the Halloween rights along with it. I have actually done a video discussing Halloween Returns back in 2015 when it was in the de middle of being developed. I may consider deleting that video now that the plug had, has been pulled on that film. And also, to also mention on a side note, the script for Halloween Returns have been leaked onto the internet in 2016, and I myself ha actually have have a copy of the script and have read it. To put it simply, I thought the script was a very decent and surprising read, uh, and I would love to consider making a video of me reviewing this that script for you all, and if y'all would like to see this video about this script of me discussing the script for Halloween Returns, please recommend it to me in the comments section below. Now, Back to this video. Then, in early 2016, it was, was officially reported that John Carpenter was becoming involved in the 11th Halloween film, acting as a creative consultant, essentially taking back his toys and doing them justice. And not only that, but that he was also, also teaming up with film producer Jason Blum on the film. Blum, whose other credits include Paranormal Activity, Insidious, Sinister, and The Purge series. 
this had given me a slight bit of hope knowing that Carpenter was returning to the very franchise he had created after being absent from it for over 30 years since Halloween 3. And also, this film would be distributed by Universal Pictures, their first Halloween film they've ever distributed in over 30 years, their last time uh, being in 1982 with Halloween 3 Season of the Witch. Uh, which, in my honesty, is not that bad of a film. It's actually a pretty decent standalone anthology film with a body snatcher style plot to it. Uh, it's not that bad. Go check it out. Uh, the, the complaints about the lack of Michael Myers in it is just stupid, but now people look back on it with positivity, and I'm glad of that. And then, around February 2017, uh, when it was announced that David Gordon Green and Danny McBride were hired to write the script for the new film with Green slated to, to direct, my initial thought was like, what? I had only known Green and McBride mostly in comedies, their main, their one collaboration being the 2008 Stoner Chase film Pineapple Express which is quite possibly the funniest stoner movie I had ever seen. But it was the exact same reaction I had when I first heard that the Russo brothers were going to direct Captain America the Winter Soldier. I just initially thought it was an odd choice to hire a filmmaker whose previous credits were comedies to helm a serious movie like this or Halloween that may seem out of their league at first. But for the Russo brothers, Cap the Winter Soldier was a big surprise. But for the next several months, Green and McBride went out onto interviews and had clarified that they had wanted the new want the new film to be as dark and suspenseful as the 1978 film, and not make it as a comedy, which meant that the new film will rely more on atmosphere and tension and suspense much like the 78 film, and not rely on graphic slasher, slasher gore and violence like the original sequels had instead opted to go for. On a side note, McBride has proven that he can do serious work when he acted in Ridley Scott's Alien Covenant. It may not have been the masterpiece we hoped it would be, but McBride was one of the big positive things about that film. I remember him saying that there was more to life than dick and fart jokes, and that he was very intent on taking his job and making his this Halloween film very seriously, which really won me over uh, with McBride. And as another side note, Carpenter had also had said that he had made a deal to do the music score for the new film which is very, very fitting because he had also done the score for the original film and its, ori its original sequel and Halloween 3. So that's a nice touch to mention there. And according to more source reports, uh, McBride had clarified that the new film would be an alternate direct sequel to the original film, said to be set 40 years after the events of that of the original, thus ignoring all of the all of the original sequels, starting with Halloween 2. So safe to say that we could describe this new film as being along the lines of Halloween 1.5 or the alternate Halloween 2. I mean, McBride had stated that their new film would start literally where the original had ended, in a bookend manner, but that it would extend past the original's ending, possibly in an intent to give a smooth transition into the new film, and give uh, a pl plausible explanation for why it, it would take Michael 40 years to return to hunt down Laurie again, after being absent for 40 years. As a loving Halloween fan, I am honestly ecstatic with what the filmmakers had been presenting to us through passing comments, such as story details and casting choices. I was honestly not, 
honestly not very much surprised when they said that they would straight up retcon the entire series and start anew. I believe it is the right choice to go for, as when you think about it, uh, in the long run, Resurrection uh, has left them nowhere else to go in the origi that original continuity. It left them nowhere else to go. And this hasn't been the first time they had uh, the try to retcon the series. It had happened before with the seventh installment, Halloween H20, in 1998. Uh, the, that film had pretty much ignored Halloween uh, 4 through 6. Uh, the, it pretty much uh, ignored Halloween 4, 5, and 6 and linked itself directly uh, to the first two uh, films. Uh, and as before, H2O was intended uh, to be the final chapter to the series, hence why they ended it with Laurie decapitating Michael. That was until they decided uh, they had decided to uh, uh, retcon that element in the ending in Resurrection uh, to keep the series going. But that had left fans, including me, with a very bad taste. It's no wonder why Jamie Lee Curtis had opted for a character to die in Resurrection. Just to get out of the series, and to send the message to the filmmakers to stop. Now, I am e even ecstatic that not only is Jamie Lee Curtis return, not only uh, is Jamie Lee Curtis returning as Laurie Strode, but also Nick Castle, the original plant man who played Michael Myers in the 78 original, is returning to play the notorious shape for this new film. So to mention, Nick Castle is now in his 70s, but there is another actor also playing Michael in it. So I believe it is very likely that the second actor, named James Jude Courtney, is there to perform big stunts that that the 70-year-old castle would possibly be unable to perform. Or it may be uh, to hide a secret that uh, the Michael we see in the new film may turn out to be a copycat or something. You never know. I'd be okay with the copycat killer idea. And in addition to Curtis and Castle, but also Judy Greer, had been cast as Lori Stoddard named Karen Strode, and that a new and young actress named Andy Matichek had been cast to play as Lori's granddaughter as well, named Allison Strode. Which means that the shape will be facing off against three generations of the Strode family. As a side note, I actually really like Judy Greer as an actress. I remember first seeing her in the that 1999 high school dark comedy Jawbreaker, which had also starred Rose McGowan, who was also in screen, Julie Benz, and Rebecca Gayhart. And yes, I have watched that movie quite a few times. Not bad, but not as smart as uh, Mean Girls. And many other films I've seen Greer in were a minor role in, in uh, in Jurassic World, she also she had also played Caesar's wife Cornelia in Dawn of the Planet of the Apes and War for the Planet of the Apes. So I am honestly glad that she is to be in the new film, in this new Halloween film. I believe she will do a great job as Laurie Strode's daughter. And in addition to those new actors. We've also got Will Patton in the cast as well. Not much detail about him in the film, except that he is reported to play a police officer in the film. Not enough detail for me to say more about this, but I find it awesome that Will Patton is in this. I really liked him as Chick in Armageddon, and he was also great as John Travolta's right-hand man in the 2004 The Punisher film starring Thomas Jane. So, cool. Will Patton in a Halloween film. Great. And 
And another thing to mention, with this being an alternate sequel to the original, this would also mean that the plot thread of Lori and Michael being siblings will be thrown out the window in this new film, and that they will once again possibly be complete strangers, uh, as they had initially been portrayed as uh, in the 78 original, an aspect of the lore at which the writers had intentionally ignored now, as they felt that the added motive of Michael as a familicidal killer had made Myers less frightening frightening as a killer. I do believe that this is a good thing to do, as if you watch the, the 78 film, not once is it ev has it ever been mentioned that Lori and Michael were siblings. It was only in its 1981 sequel, Halloween 2, when it was revealed, uh, and much like every other fan, I believe that this became had become the start of all the problems the series had suffered from. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love Halloween 2. It is my most favorite out of all the the, the original Halloween sequels. But I but it is I believe it is where the series had started its downfall. But what I am wondering is how they're they're going to explain why Michael resumes back to hunting down Lori and her family again after being absent for 40 years. Hopefully, they will have a reasonable and also somewhat plausible explanation for that minor detail. And one prime thing I am also glad to hear is that with Carpenter having been displeased with Rob Zombie's reimagining and added backstory of Michael Myers, he had wanted the uh, to take the character back to his more mysterious roots, describing him as a force of nature that is almost supernatural, with McBride further clarifying that it is, in his, own, in his words, uh, quote, much more horrifying to be scared by someone standing in the shadows while, while you're taking the trash out as opposed to someone who can't, not, can't be killed pursuing you, end quote. And to be honest, I am very enthused uh, the, that the filmmakers are opting uh, uh, to strip Michael back, strip Michael back down to his original roots as a frightening stealth killer. Because really, uh, the really he, I believe he had lost all credibility as a stealth killer in the sequels. My one prime example being in Resurrection. Uh, where Buster Rhymes manages to survive being brutally stabbed in the shoulder by Michael. That's where I believe uh, it was at that moment Michael lost all credibility as a stealth killer. Thank God they're... And thank God they are going back to basics with Michael in this new film. And so far throughout the film's development, Many of the cast and crew have been very positive positive about the film they have been working on. Filming had started. Filming had only uh, happened uh, uh, in January and February, so it's finished filming. Uh, even Nick Castle on this one interview had said that it feels very much like the '78 film. That it has that suburban atmosphere and a strong sense of suspense in it, which I believe is a very good thing to hear from. It appears that we may possibly have something very special coming out from this new, of this new Halloween movie. I cannot wait to see what the trailer will present to us. Uh, then I will have a, a very good impression of what it may possibly be. I am a very impatient man when it comes to new upcoming movies. I want to see the tr the new trailer. I want to know when it when it is coming out, possibly July or something, or April. But overall, in conclusion of this video, I am very much ecstatically happy with every detail that is to come in this new upcoming Halloween film. This may quite possibly be the Halloween sequel I had long desired to see for so long. 
I am putting my full trust into Danny McBride and da David Gordon Green in doing the right thing. And come October no the 19th, you bet your ass you will definitely uh, see me be the first in line to get a seat ticket to see this film when it is finally released in theaters. And with that said, I do s sincerely hope that this film takes us all by surprise and wins us over. I do hope this movie does great and succeeds. I honestly do not want this movie to fail. I only have one thing to say to McBride, and I am saying this very seriously. Do not fuck this up. So thank you for watching, ladies and gents. And what do you think of this new upcoming Halloween film? Are you happy with the details that have been coming out? Or, w or will you wait uh, until, the tra until the trailer to make an impression of it? Let me know what you think of it in the comment section below. So once again, thanks for watching, ladies and gents. And until then, I will see you all next time. And remember, as Dr. Loomis would put it, the evil has came home. Peace!